Good morning, everyone. This is Ada, and welcome to my channel, Miss Wear 0104. Um, I've been inspired to make this video because some people found me here on YouTube making comments on other people's videos about the K-1 visa process. Yes, my fiancé, well, now husband, we went through that whole process that's done and over with. Um, I will go into detail letting you know everything that you will have to do if you want to do the same thing. If you're living in the United States and you have a fiance over somewhere else, my husband was in Jamaica, so um, our K-1 visa process was to get him to the United States from Jamaica. Um, I've contact, well, people have contacted me um, about their fiance being in Barbados, um, Grenada, Jamaica, like mine. Um, let's see, Africa. Um, I've had several people contact me. One man and the rest were women. So I just want to show you something. This binder here. This binder and all this information in it is what I had to put together and send over to the USCIS. Now, letting you know ahead of time, everything that you send, you must make a copy. So this big old binder, this is my copy. They receive the same thing. And you better believe they keep everything you send them. Um, all of this here is proof that my husband and I are in a real relationship let me speak on fiance terms because husband if I had went over to Jamaica and married him that wouldn't be the K-1 visa that would be the CR-1 I believe it's called for um, bringing a relative over a spouse over that's not the process that we went through we went through the K-1 visa so this is about the K-1 visa so that's he's my husband but I will have to refer to him as my fiance because we're going back in time to help you all out with this. Okay, so what the USCIS wanted me to do and my husband and my fiance to do is prove that we are in a legitimate relationship. It's no fakeness going on. Uh, it's no he trying to get over to the United States and just marrying me just to get here and to get his papers and all that. No, we are in a real marriage. We are in a real relationship. And I had to prove that with all of this. So the first thing they want to know before you even get started with this process is have you seen your fiance in person? Now, there are people that are actually engaged and they've never seen each other in person. They've developed that relationship over phone calls, emails, video chat, whatever the case may be. But in my case, when I did all this paperwork, put all this paperwork together for the USCIS, I had already visited my fiance twice. Um, and then I went two more times afterwards. And then the third time was as he received his visa and I was going to go pick him up, girl or guy. <laughs> okay, so like I said, this binder right here, is what I had to put together to keep him here, to keep him here another video alrighty so just like the show 90 day fiance it is real it is real but we'll get to that alrighty so I bought my binder I bought my plastic sleeves to put all my information in I'm trying to keep reminding myself to look at the lens and not myself but hey you might see me doing both all right I'm going to open this up so I can discuss everything that I put together. So what I did was I typed up a cover page. Now this cover page says, uh, this section contains the I-129F cover letter, because I typed up a cover letter. This section also um, includes the G-1145, 
which is the e-notification of application and peti petition acceptance, meaning that once the USCIS receive my information, my application and everything that's included with the, in the binder, they will email me and text me letting me know that they have received it already. So, and I also received a, um, I'll get to it, I'm jumping ahead. All right, so the K-1 visa process is $535. So you also have to send a personal check or a cashier's check for $535. I sent a bank cashier check with my application. Okay, so also in this section was the I-129F petition for the alien fiance K-1 visa application. I also included the I-129F supplement, which was part two, question 34A, which was just a letter explaining um, how we met in person and what we did. Like, I met his family, I met his daughter. Um, he has three children, but I met his daughter on that trip, so I had to talk to them about that and just say what we did. We went to the beach, so on and so forth. Um, the I-134 is the affidavit of support. So when your fiance comes over to the United States, they're not gonna be able to work for a, a good year, just about almost, it was actually 11 months before my husband received his work authorization and his permanent residency card, which allowed him to work. So the affidavit of support is to prove how much money you make because you will have to support your fiance until he or she is able to get a job on their own. Okay. Um, so it says here, and I don't remember doing it, but it says here that I also wrote a letter explaining my affidavit of support. Um, I guess because I had several different um, types of income coming in. So I must have wrote a letter explaining that. Um, yeah, I did. I put that here. Two extra additional letters explaining my additional um, income. Um, also, there's another form called the G325A, which is the biological information. You have to print two of them. All this information is free. Never, never pay for any forms. You can get it on the USCIS website for free, and that's USCIS.gov. Okay. So the G325A is the biological, I'm sorry, biographical information. And I printed it out for me, which I am the petitioner, and he is the beneficiary, along with a passport picture. You will need four passport pictures to send them for your fiance. You only need one passport picture to send them for yourself. The more information that the U.S. citizen sends in to the USCIS, the better, because that's the least your um, your fiance will have to take with them to their to their interview. And um, this here is my cover letter that I sent to them, and the cover letter is explaining every single thing that's in backside every single thing that's in this binder alrighty so um, it will be easy for me to kind of like go through this instead of each page but we'll see we'll see how it goes that's what I go along in the video and how I feel <laughs> alrighty so the G 325 a with the passport photo for the petitioner which is me the G 325 a and passport photo for my fiance. Um, next, I had to send in, not, okay, we're gonna send in all this together. So next I had to put in the binder, um, my United States of America birth certificate, um, my United States driver's license, and let's see. I've been married before, so I had to also send in every driver's license I had showing every name that I've used. So I sent in my driver's license for my current name and I sent in my driver's license for what my name was before I got divorced. Um, also, I had to send in documentation showing that I had a change of last name. 
Um, I had to send in a copy of my social security card. And also I had to send in a copy of my passport. Now, with sending in a copy of your passport, you have to take a copy of the front cover, the front of the book, the back of the book, and every single page inside that passport. They don't care if you've never been anywhere. They don't care if you've only traveled to one side of the country. They want to see every single page. I had 50 pages, I think 51 pages or something like that in my passport, so guess what? I had to send them. Two of my pages had, had a stamp in it. The rest was blank, so I had to send them a copy of all those blank pages. They didn't care, they wanted to see that entire passport. Okay, next I sent in, um, well not sent in, because it's all in the binder, so excuse me if I say if I, if, that I sent it in, because it's not like I sent all this stuff in separately, it all went together. Okay, so I put also in the binder a copy, and I went down to Jamaica and got all my husband, my fiance's information. Um, so I got, a, I got a copy of his Jamaican passport, um, every single page, a copy of his Jamaican um, birth certificate, and a letter certifying um, my intent to marry him, and a letter certifying his intent to marry me. So what that means, um, a certified letter um, of intent to marry, that is simply me writing a letter telling them that he is my fiance, um, my feelings for him, my um, desire and wants for us together um, in the future, how we want to get married, be a family, so on and so forth. My fiance slash husband, because he is my husband, like I said before, my fiance at the time, he wrote a letter also and signed and dated it, telling his feelings about me and his intent on our future plans together. All right, so I had to send in proof of meeting him in person. They want you to um, have seen each other in person within the last, or shall I say the current two years. So if you've seen him 10 years ago and 10 years later you wanna marry him, that's not good enough. They want to know that it's legitimate um, why is it that why is it that you haven't seen him in 10 years? Did y'all break up? Like why did y'all that's just gonna ask that's just gonna open up the door for more questions So it's best if you all have seen each other within two years Okay now for religious and belief purposes. They do excuse, you know people uh because some people, their their faith or their beliefs is you don't meet the man or the woman until your wedding day. So they excuse stuff like that. So if you haven't seen your fiance at all because of those purposes, they'll excuse you not having any proof of relationship. As far as meeting in person, you still got to prove your relationship other ways. Um, so yeah, we're getting to that next point, proof of your ongoing relationship. So I had to send in proof of our communication, which was Facebook messages, uh, his comments on my pictures on Facebook, WhatsApp texts, Gmail and email and, you know, Gmail, email, Gmail messages, um, Yahoo messages where we would chat back and forth back in the day, um, proof of travel. So my proof of travel going to go see my fiance was I had to send in copies of my plane tickets to and back home, to Jamaica and back home to the US. I had to send in copies of my receipts for my plane tickets, copies of my receipts for my place that I stayed in when I went down to see him. Um, we also had to send in receipts of our wedding rings. Um, if you have any proof that you're engaged, like you all had a video or a pictures taken, which we did not, because it was just the two of us, so we didn't have anything like that, but they would like to see that if you have it. Okay, um, let me just read it, what I have here. Copies of documents submitted 
are exact photocopies of unaltered documents, you gotta write this on your cover letter. So let me repeat, let me start over. Copies of documents submitted are exact photocopies of unaltered documents, and I understand that I may be required to submit original documents to the immigration or consular at a later date. Sincerely, in my name, signed in tights. Ready, so. One moment, I'll be back. Alrighty, alrighty. So in this binder, I like I said, when you send your binder over to the USCIS, you're gonna never see it again. Um, I did see a lot of paperwork later on when it made it back to the United States after my husband was here and we had to go in for our interview for the permanent residency, I did see our application again in some of those papers and I was just like in awe, like, like wow, how they kept up with all this stuff and left. Um, it went to three states here in the United States, um, then it went over to Jamaica and back to my, my state, which is Arizona. So that was like a trip to see my paperwork that I had sent them back in 2011 to see it again in 20, not 11, Lord, forgive me. My paperwork that I had seen back in, that I sent to them, my paperwork that I had sent to them back in 2018 to see it two years later in 2020 back in my state. That, that was a little trippy. But um, anyways, I'm good with holding on to paperwork. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so what I did was I made a copy of that um, bank sort of uh, that bank cashier's check I made a copy for my own records um, I also went to the bank when the USCIS cashed that check I went to the bank and got a copy of that cash check and I also got that I have that in my folder I didn't put that in their folder I have that for myself in my folder Okay, so the, um, the, wait a minute, hold on for a moment, something going on here. I had dropped my binder the other night, it was on my bed, so I see I have something out of order, so I just gotta quickly, quickly put it back in order really fast. Now, let me just talk to you about something while I'm doing this. There are some cases where, you know, there's people who, um, there are people who don't make enough money to support their fiance for that year that it's going to take for them to get their work authorization. So, if that's the case, if you have family, if you have family that's willing to, um, to write a letter stating that they will help you sponsor your fiance, you can do that and they would have to be the one to fill out that affidavit of support. But with that being said, some people may be uncomfortable with that because the USCIS does say one moment okay so um, there are some instances where a person is not able to sponsor their fiance for that year that it's going to take them to get their um, work authorization and permanent residence residency card um, so in those instances if you do have fam friends or family members who is willing to state that they would be willing to um, sponsor your fiance for you, um, which that is rare to have someone be willing to do that. Um, but if they, they are willing, they can fill out that affidavit of support um, in place of you for your fiance. But with that being said, let me also state that the USCIS will say that that person is responsible for um, the non-immigrant, that's what they're called, the non, they're called non-immigrants, um, that they would be responsible for them for 10 whole years. So a lot of people get nervous when they hear that and, you know, suddenly don't 
become so willing anymore. So make sure you make enough money um, for someone who really trusts you and really trusts your fiance and is willing to go ahead and fill out that affidavit of support for them. Um, so the K-1 visa, that form or packet rather is 13 pages long. So um, you, when you print it out, you will see all the information that you need to place in there. So I have those 13 pages here. I added all three of his children on this application because, you know, I'm willing to um, take on his children just as he's taken on mine. I have three children, he has three children. So, of course, of course, I would love for them to come here. And they are, actually. But we'll save that for another video. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'm excited. I've always wanted a lot of kids. So, yeah. Like I said, in this K-1 visa process and the application, I listed all three of his children in there. So later on, after we got married, we can go back and get the kids. But you have one year. One year only. And with this coronavirus out, it blocked us. It blocked us big time. Um with getting his son's visas because they weren't able to go to the embassy for their interview. So um, that's up in the air right now. His daughter do have her visa and we're going to go pick her up next week. Alrighty, so after the 129F um, letter that I spoke to you about, I see here that I just wrote a letter explaining um, our relationship, um, just a paragraph. The second paragraph explaining the dates and what we did on my first visit to see him, my second visit to see him, oh, and my third visit to see him. So, I'm a little shocked on this because I had only seen him, oh, I did see him three times before I sent him this application. That's correct. I went to see him for his birthday and get all the and to get all his information to put in here. Okay, so I explained my third visit to see him also. Signed dated, put my address, my email address, um, and my phone number. So my home address, email address, and phone number. The affidavit itself, which is the I-134. Um, that's eight pages long, so that's just asking you about your work and your money, honey. That's what that's asking you about. Um, afterwards, <sighs> I wrote a letter explaining my income because believe me they kept getting it wrong saying that I wasn't making enough money to sponsor my fiance and I know I do make enough money so I was tripping I guess I do so I had to believe me I'm telling you this was like two months of trying to get them to look at everything that I sent them I don't just have w-2s I have 1099s too please look at all of that honey I make enough money <laughs> Alrighty, so if you have to write a letter also and you have somebody to help sponsor you, have them write a letter along with that affidavit of support. Alright, so the G325A, the biographical information sheet, that asks you for your name, birthday, your nationality, your previous names, your home address, social security number, your parents' names, what city and state they were born in, or country um, and country I'm sorry um, it asks about your current husband or wife if you're currently married but you're on a file for somebody else I ain't judging nobody ain't nobody perfect anyways but mine was blank okay I was divorced okay 
moving along, it does ask about your former husband or your former wife or wives. Um, it asks you about your current address and any other addresses you lived in in the past. Um, let's see. It also asks for your address if you've ever lived outside of the United States, which I have not. Okay, it asks me about my work and for the past few years. Okay, so for a while I was a stay-at-home mom, so I only had one employer to list. Um, sign and date, and that was that. Now, I had to do the same thing for my fiance. And I had him. That's my other reason. My other reason for my third trip to Jamaica um, was for his birthday and also to get him to sign all of his paperwork. He has to have his signature on all this. How I told you that we needed to send in a copy of our passport. If it's 50 pages long and it's 50 blank pages, he had to sign all 50 of the blank pages. Um, I can't remember. I think his, I think his passport might have been that long too. I can't remember. But yes, next I'm at my birth certificate here. Um, so I sent them a copy of my birth certificate, a copy of my driver's license and my current name, a copy of my driver's license and my previous name, a copy of my social security card and my current name, a copy of my social security card and my previous name, my passport. All 50 pages. Also, they stopped stamping my passport when I went to Jamaica. Um, so I only have two stamps in my passport. The rest, three stamps in my passport. The other two trips, they gave me like a little slip with my picture on it. That, that sucked. Because that's the excitement of having a passport, to get all the stamps. That was the purpose of that. All right, I'm back. I had to do some things here and get a little lunch my husband made me a shrimp salad okay so i'm sorry y'all gotta watch me eat mm. All right, so I got distracted when I was making the video earlier because I noticed some missing pages out of my book. So I know with the other paperwork that I've recently done, I had to use some of the information in this binder to put another binder together. Um, so with that being said, when you get all your paperwork together in a binder, make a copy of every single thing that you're gonna send to them because you're gonna need it again later. You're gonna need it again later. You're gonna need it to keep your fiance here. Um, and you're gonna also need it if you file for their children to come before that year is up. So, um, the last thing I had spoke about was I placed my birth certificate, my driver's license, in my passport, all 50 pages, a copy of all 50 pages of my passport in the binder. I had to do the same thing for my fiance. And that's what's actually missing at the binder, his birth certificate and passport. So I have to find what I did with that stuff, Lord. Anyways, so I got, I put his passport from Jamaica in the binder, his identification and also his um, birth certificate. Next came our letters of intent to marry one another. So, I wrote a letter discussing my feelings and my future plans for him and I together. And he did the same thing. He wrote a letter and discussing his future plans with us together as a family and his feelings for me. Okay. Next, if you've been divorced before, you're going to have to... Um, Place a copy of your certified di divor divorce decree in there. Um, next, what comes in the binder is our proof of relationship. So I have a copy of so many of our 
text messages, our WhatsApp messages, his comments on my pictures, my comments on his pictures, emails. And I had to, I, I sent quite a bit because I think less is better. You know what I'm saying? Less, I mean, more is better. I'm sorry. I think more is better. So I sent a lot of information. Um, we knew each other from 2011 uh, as just friends. We were just friends from 2011 until 2017 is when we actually got into a relationship together. So I had a lot of information to send, you know, keep it discreet. Um, if y'all flirting with one another, I mean, that's fine. Innocent, innocent, but nothing graphic. I heard they wouldn't like that anyway. I didn't have anything like that to send. <laughs> All right, so. So anyways, making myself blush. All right, so, um, yes. So as you see me flipping through the pages, that's, that's how much proof of relationship I have. And I'm still flipping through some. I took screenshots of our WhatsApp messages. Our WhatsApp messages, just in case you didn't hear me because I'm flipping pages. I took screenshots of our text messages, of our WhatsApp messages, comments that he made on my page, Facebook page, comments I made on his page. Um, I took pictures of our inbox, messages to one another. Um, I, I'm still going through text messages. That's how many pages. Let me just go ahead and say how many pages of, of, of evidence I sent so you can have an idea of what I'm talking about. Because I'm, I'm telling you right now, you just in a little bit, you're going to be like, this is not enough. You're not proving to me that you are in a real relationship. So this is front and back. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 14, 16, 18, Fifty. Okay, so I sent fifty pages of evidence, and let me just show you what it looks like. So it's not like full pages. It's not like I'm telling everything. It looks like this. This is just a screenshot of our. This is when we were on. Um, it wasn't WhatsApp. It was something else. Some other app. I M O. Yeah. So I sent our, some of our IMO messages also. Um, next, if you all exchange gifts with one another, send proof of that. So I sent receipts for a birthday gift I got for him. Um, I also put in receipts of a gift he gave me. So when I got to Jamaica for his birthday, my very first trip there, he had a gift for me. So we exchanged gifts. He had a gift for me. Three gifts for me. And I had two gifts for him. Okay, so we also sent receipts for our wedding rings. I sent a receipt for a Christmas gift I took down there for him. Um... What is this? Oh, a receipt for um, an infinity necklace that I got with both of our names on it. And a picture of me wearing it. Because of course, he's my real man. It's not fake. I'm gonna wear him, you know what I'm saying? This is my man. <laughs> it's my man, Chad. So, yeah, you're not going to just be walking around with a necklace with some dude's name on it and he ain't nothing to you, you know? So I wanted to show that, like, hey, I got my man name with my name around my neck. 
he's mine and I'm his. All right, so the next thing I sent was proof of my first trip to Jamaica with the dates. Copies of the airline tickets, copy of the itinerary, and a copy of my receipt for the place I stayed when I was there. Also, pictures of me and his family members that I met, so two, four, six pages of pictures. Mm. My second trip, I did the same thing. And this is what I did right here. Everything has a cover page. Everything in the binder has a cover page. So, Ada's first trip to Jamaica. Ada's second trip to Jamaica. Ada's third trip to Jamaica. Ada's fourth trip, fifth trip, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. And pictures. Receipts for every trip. So, Ada's second trip to Jamaica to see Shimon was um, on these dates. Here's my itinerary from the airport. Here is my plane tickets. Um, my three children went with me. Here are their plane tickets. Here are pictures of me, my children, and him. Here's a receipt for the place that my children and I stayed in. He stayed with us. His daughter came along. Here are pictures of me and his daughter and my three children, my two sons and daughter. All right, all the way to the day we left. So, two, six, eight, seven. So that's when I sent seven pages of pictures. I made them really small. Um, third trip, did the same thing. You get the idea. Alrighty, so, um, second trip when I went down there, no, third, when I went down there, um, I went with him to get his passport photo so that I can add with the application to the USCIS. I have that receipt in here, um, and when I got back. I took my passport picture because I couldn't figure out how to get my nose and lip ring out. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So I had to wait till I get back. Till I got back. Okay, so third trip, took pictures. We went to a wedding. I, I sent those pictures. Um, for myself, I just took a picture of the UPS order when I shipped this binder over to the USCIS. Um, I sent, let me give you a little time frame, a little timeline. Now, I sent the application over on February 28th, 2018. I heard back from them through a text message and an email on March 6th. Did I say February 8th or 28th? It was, it was the last day of February that I, I mailed it. So it was February 28th, and I heard back from them through a text message and an email on March 6th. 2018 so just like a week later I not only received a text message and email but they sent to me my notice of action which is the form I 797c they sent me that already um, after you receive that I'm gonna let you know right now it's time to chill and just let them do their thing. They're investigating everything. They're investigating you. They're investigating him. They want to uh, see if everything that you've sent them seems legitimate. So you're not going to hear from them for a whole six long, dry, anxious months. Six whole months. I didn't hear anything. Not one thing. Finally. Finally, when I did hear from them, it was on September 24th. 
So March, April, May, June, July, August, September, six months, like I said, September 24th, they, they sent me an email saying that the USCIS had approved everything and they were gonna send it over to another state to the National Visa Center. And I needed to wait for them to tell me what was what. So it was a whole month later that I heard from the National Visa Center saying, okay, everything looks good. We approved it as well. Now we're going to send your information over to the U.S. Embassy in Jamaica. And that's what they did. At that point, I never heard anything else from them again. I didn't hear nothing. At that point, they started contacting my fiancé. So they started telling him everything he needed to do. And what he needed to do at that point was get onto a website to get his DS-160 number. He had to also go and get his medical exam. He had to go to the police station and get a report stating that he's never been in trouble, never been in jail, nothing of the sort. And he also had to get a letter of impediment, which means that he had to go to some building in downtown Kingston or uptown Kingston, I can't remember which, and get a certificate. It was an actual certificate um, showing that he had never been married before. Never been married before. Um, so all of that he had to take with him to his interview. And so that was in October when they contacted him. His interview was in December. So after his interview, um, I guess they overlooked some of the stuff in my in, in, in my binder. So they contacted him telling him to tell me that I needed to resend that stuff back to them. So I had to email that information back to them even though it was in the binder. I just bit my lip and sent it because I wanted my man here, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. After that, they contacted me and told me that um, they were not able to give him his visa because I didn't make enough money to um, be able to support him when he came over to the United States. And the United States don't want anybody from another country coming over here and living off of government assistance. I'll let them know, hey, I don't live off of government assistance, and he's not gonna have to either. And you're not looking at all my information because I, I make enough money to sponsor him. So after two months, they finally looked at everything and um, his brother was like, hey, I'm just gonna go ahead and send my information to you also and you can send it along with yours just to go ahead and speed up the process. So, you know, by the time the uh, manager over the U.S. Embassy for the non-immigrant K-1 visa um, department contacted me, saying to um, go ahead and resend my stuff, I sent my brother-in-law stuff too. So, it was March when my fiance received his visa, and honey, I still remember. That was on Friday, he didn't get the email until it was later. Ooh. He picked his visa up Monday morning. Two hours later, I was in Jamaica, girl, get my man. I was in Jamaica picking him up. Okay, um, let's see what this is. Okay, this is the letter from the National Visa Center where they contacted me. They were in New Hampshire where they contacted me and said that they were sending everything over to Jamaica. So then, yes, at that time, your fiance will have to go to a website and you'll get an information with, you'll get a, an email with all that information in it telling you to complete the DS-160, to register online for the interview, and pay your $265 interview fee. Also, schedule your medical exam and gather information that they need from you, which is passport, Passport photos, um, birth certificate, 
marriage certificate, which he we we didn't have because we weren't married yet. We were trying to get married. Um, a police record, like I said before. Um, evidence of support. I think they asked me for that again. Um, in medical examination. So, with that being said, he got his visa, and uh, he was here with me, child. He was here with me, and he's still here with me. And I'm happy. I'm very happy on the decision that I made to um, to be with him. And everything so later on when I get a chance I'll go ahead and go through the whole um, process of getting your permanent residency card and your work authorization card which I'm telling you you have until the third month to file that out, to fill that out and send it in with with that fee. Girl, child, they want money for everything you do. But if you want your man or your woman, it's worth the it, child. But um, anyways, um, you have three months to plan a wedding, to get married, and to file for their work authorization and permanent res residency card or they will have to go back to the country they came from. So, child, we was moving like a bat out of H, getting that stuff done. All right, so I hope I didn't, I'm just looking through here to see what I got up in here. So, um, I hope this was informative and I didn't bore y'all head off. Cause I'm doing like a hundred million things at once. I have all my yarn over here ready to crochet. I have my lunch here. Uh, I need to go grab me a drink out the fridge. Um, yeah. And I'm doing this video in segments because I'm at work and I still have my client that I need to tend to. So, um, yeah. So if my video looks a little choppy, that's why. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out what happened to them missing pages in my book i don't like losing anything all right so i'm gonna go ahead and let you all go this is a friday this is july 10th 2020 enjoy your weekend god bless be safe out there with that COVID. wear your mask love peace and happiness. All right, I'm going, y'all. Take care of yourself.